public exposure and we are continuing on to investigate the foreclosure crisis and we're very fortunate to have back with us Howard Bono of the Financial Revival Group my my own financial no my financial revival.com I'll get that you right you got it yes Howard welcome back thank you very much this time we're talking about policy and nothing but policy it's national policy it's with this it's the debt debate and housing and I'm going to go to the financial revival uh, website because you talk in there about the the debt debate and, and the housing market itself does it relate Oh, absolutely. How so? Absolutely. Um, you know, when, when we look at the amount of money that our federal government spends versus the amount of money that, uh, that we actually bring in as a nation, you know, that amount of money that we have to borrow every single month in order to survive as a country, that money comes from the same pool of money that you and I use to borrow money to buy houses with. And so just because interest rates are low right now doesn't mean that you find it easy to borrow money. The government's taking a huge chunk of that money out of that pool of money that we borrow money from as well. Well, let's go to the U.S. debt clock. Now, we're going to go to the first graphic. Uh, and, um, you know, there's a lot of numbers up here. So, so let's kind of hone down just a little bit. Let's go to this, this next one. Here's the U.S. national debt at the time this was done was, I don't, what is that number? It's fourteen trillion dollars, and then that debt per citizen. Debt per citizen is forty-seven thousand, and the debt per taxpayer is one hundred and thirty-one thousand. Now, the thing that people need to understand: if you do go to usdebtclock.org, what you'll see is that number of total U.S. debt. Mm -hmm. That number spins and it increases by hundred thousand dollars every three and a half seconds. It actually it gave me a headache just watching uh, it today. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, let's go back to it because we need to hone down some more on those numbers. Okay, so let's go to the next one here. Let's, all right, click on to the next one here. This is what we spend money on. Um, Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security, those two really are tied to aging, right? They are, but Stan, the important thing that people need to realize here is when you're looking at the U.S. national debt, where we see that it's $47,000 per person in this country, that doesn't include the additional debt that we have for Social Security, prescription drug benefits, Medicaid. It doesn't include any of those. That's all additional debt that on top of the $14 trillion that we as a country owe. All right, well, let's, let's actually go to the next part because what I, we're doing now is, is these are, this is the assets. And, you know, this is a little bit smaller to see the small business corporations, household assets is a big thing, and then total national assets. But I want to I hone in on that last part. Let's go. Here we are. Assets per citizen, $250,000 of $251,000, but liability per taxpayer, a million dollars? Yes. We're backwards. Yeah, but we could solve this problem pretty easily. If, if you and I and everybody else, if we just cut the check for a million dollars, you write your check for a million, I'll write my check for a million. If we as a country, if every citizen in the country wrote our check for a million bucks and gave it to the government, we'd be okay. What has housing's role been in this? You know, housing's role has been, over the last decade or so, really has created a lot of, for lack of a better term, imagined wealth. We are a consumer society. The government gets, a, a, I'm going to use a term that a, a good friend of mine uses, a vig. The government gets a vig, a little piece of everything that we do. You get a paycheck, the government gets a vig. You buy something, the government gets a vig. Mm -hmm. You use your cell phone, which raises the bill, the government gets a vig. You rent a car, you, any, anything that you mm -hmm. do is taxed virtually. But I, but I get services back, so I'm okay. You, you do, and the government gets a vig on all that little stuff, right? Mm -hmm. so, so what happens is, when housing prices were escalating, people were using that, even if they weren't borrowing money out of their houses to spend money, they felt like they were progressing up the financial scale. So they were buying more things. They were going to dinner. They were, you know, buying new appliances or new carpeting mm -hmm. or taking vacations and doing all of those things that people aren't doing now. Well, I have everything that I want. Well, we've realized that now. You know, uh, I read something. But uh, we're also an older population. True. Um, I read something about 10 years ago that said if Americans had 20% more than what they had, 
you know, if they could lose that last 20 pounds or if they were a little taller or if they, the boat was a little bit longer or if they had a newer motorhome or whatever it was, that they would feel successful. So that's what we always strived for. Now the, the attitude in our country, more, more and more of what I see, is people are saying, you know, I'm really okay right where I'm at. Hmm. Let's know? go to the state debt clock, by the way. The usdebtclock.org has a, also a, a division for state here. So we're not looking real great on that either. Well, this is the part that I find interesting in terms of the state of Washington, because we hear on the news that we have a $2 billion shortfall. That was the latest thing that just came out, yeah. or a billion two or somewhere in there. They're going to call a special session mm -hmm. to cut another billion dollars out. But if we look at that graphic up there of how much money we spend, so, so look at that, where you see revenue of 55 billion dollars, that one only has nine zeros, mm -hmm. 55 billion dollars, and spending of 71 billion dollars, that looks to me like a 16 billion dollar hole in the budget. It does look like Not, that. I, it, and so are these numbers accurate, or are we, it is our legislature, our state legislature, using accounting gimmicks and tricks in order to say, well, we've only got a billion dollars that we need to fill? What is the answer? I, I believe the answer is that they're using a lot of accounting tricks. For example, the last time that the, they got together to cut a bunch of money out, what they did was they took a pension plan, a pension payment that they needed to make, and instead of making that payment on June 30th, they made it on July 1st so that they could count that as a budget cut. Hmm. Hey, 30 seconds. If people go to uh, myfinancialrevival.com, will they learn anything? Absolutely. Our, our whole goal is education, what we want people to do. I believe people are inherently smart. If they get good information, they'll make good financial decisions. And if they're in a hole right now, it's probably because they didn't get good information and they made decisions based on that bad information. We want to educate. You can go to our website. You can spend hours there getting, not necessarily re-educated, but learning the story behind the story. On Public Exposure, we are investigating the foreclosure crisis, and this time we're talking about policy. Be sure to stay tuned. We'll be right back.